For a while now, I've been developing my game with the assumption that everyone is playing with a mouse and keyboard. This was fine during the early testing phases, but I'm reaching the point where I really want anyone to play the game however they want. So I began work on two big milestones, input keybinding and controller support. Here's a great example of why keybinding is important. Many players use keyboard layouts that don't match my own, so the WASD movement I implemented wasn't really usable for them. Allowing users to map their movement to whichever keys they want completely fixes this issue. It's also a great benefit for accessibility, since there isn't a single layout that's comfortable or even usable for everyone. A lot of my code originally looked like this, where it's checking for specific keys in order to perform specific actions. A setup like this has no flexibility, and if I ever wanted to change the controls to something else, I'd need to manually go through the code and find all the places where that input is read. A much better solution is using some kind of input library, in my case this one called Baton for Love2D. Using this code, every action has a corresponding list of inputs that trigger that action. For example, the player can dodge by using either of these two inputs, spacebar or the B button. And then in the code, I just check for the dodge input, rather than specifically checking for the spacebar or the B button. That way, when the list of inputs for dodge gets updated, my code doesn't have to change at all. Implementing this was easy, but it was very tricky and time-consuming to make a UI for players to edit these inputs. Although the graphics for all of this needs to be updated, I'm very happy with how functional it is. You can add and remove inputs to any row for any action, and it also saves and reloads these updates, so you only have to mess with this once. Now that the input can be rebound, I started working on the next task, which was controller support. Like I mentioned earlier, the game was originally played with a mouse and keyboard, and the expectation was that the mouse would help with aiming certain attacks, like the bow. Since controller support would completely remove the mouse, I had to rework how a lot of the player's mechanics worked. To start things off, I worked on the player's movement. Previously, we would use the WASD keys to move, which resulted in eight directions you could walk in, the four primary directions, and the diagonals. With a controller, though, you can use an analog stick to move. This is a bit different, since you can tilt the stick in basically infinite directions, and I want to be able to support this. Fortunately, when the game framework is reading the input for an analog stick, it essentially provides us with a vector value for that direction, and I can easily use this for the player's movement. It had some interesting side effects, as seen by this clip from a development stream I had. Matt, the floor would uh, round to an integer. Um, oh, why did I disappear? What is happening? Whoa! Dude! Look at the player! It looks like Paper Mario! That's so cool! It's scaling the player's x or it's, uh, it's scaling the player's width. That's crazy. That's so cool, that's a really cool effect actually. Once the movement was fixed and working, I had to rework how the player decided which direction to swing the sword or shoot the bow. Previously, it was just aiming towards the mouse, but in cases where we don't have the mouse, the attack direction is based on the last direction that the player moved. Or alternatively, if the right stick is facing a direction, that's the one you'll be attacking in. This allows players on a controller to have the same movement options as mouse and keyboard, like walking in one direction while aiming in another. With all of these controller changes, it simultaneously added support for a keyboard-only mode, which I think will be really useful to players using a laptop, since using a trackpad mouse to aim is kind of awkward. Navigating all of the menus without a mouse was another thing I needed to consider. Although it's more of a temporary solution, I made it so a new cursor shows up in any menus like this that can be controlled with a keyboard or a joystick, and this only appears if the mouse isn't being used. I don't really like cursors like this very much that you control with a joystick, but it's a quick and effective way for me to give controller users all the same benefits as the mouse. I did plenty of testing with my own controllers to make sure this was working, and I'm really happy that most standard controllers will work with the game right away without altering any of the defaults. But even if something wasn't right, the controller can be rebound in the same way as the keyboard and mouse, so there shouldn't be any big blockers for any players. I got some help with testing some more unique controllers, like my friend who set up the game with a box, which is a controller made especially for Smash Bros. Melee, and it works great. Lots of folks have been trying this out and giving me feedback on the Discord server, and although there were some bugs with it at first, it's reached a much more stable state and I can officially call the controller and keybinding support complete. Thank you to everyone who provided feedback during this process, and thank you so much for watching this video.